So the holidays have passed. Pretty crazy time, I think we can agree. There are two movies in this Wood React that I would like to go over. Avatar The Way of Water and Glass Onion. Now I'll get through my reaction for both movies as quickly as possible. Uh, <laughs> I do have a, a lot of points to, to cover. I liked both movies for very different reasons, obviously, but let's get into it. So Avatar The Way of Water, uh, a well worth the wait return to Pandora. Much more immersive, obviously, because now we delve into the sea life of Pandora. It's more beautiful and more immersive in the sequel, and I really did a good job <laughs> continuing to open up the world of Pandora, introducing us to more of the, the wildlife, the customs of the Navi. Now, I know this movie is three hours. <laughs> you know, a lot of people probably rolled their eyes when they found out about the runtime, but honestly, my opinion, it did not feel like three hours. I, I think it had to do with the pacing, honestly. I think the movie is very well paced. Introduction, there's a lot of exposition. There's a lot to get filled in on since the last movie, because obviously about a decade has passed between the events of the first movie and the second movie. So there's a lot to know. There's a lot we didn't know initially <laughs> after the last movie ended that we're now getting told about in the beginning of this movie, the first like five or ten minutes. A lot of exposition. But once that's out of the way, you're on board. You're all for it. You're all you're with the characters for the rest of the movie. There is much better character work in this movie. I know James Cameron has come out saying that there is much more focus on the characters in Avatar The Way of Water and he yeah. Uh, so a lot more backstory, a lot more complicated issues arise with not just the protagonists, but the antagonists. Which is interesting how they brought back the, the same characters, in a way. Or they brought back some of the same, they brought back the same actors, Stephen Lang, Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver is playing the daughter of... <laughs> the character that she played in the last movie, which will probably be the most intriguing talked about parental mystery since Rey's parentage in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Stephen Lang returns as pretty much the same character, but as a, a Navi in Avatar. You know, it's stuff like this being introduced to him in the first 10 minutes that really made me go, huh. Now I noticed that the pacing is pretty good, or at least for me it is, it doesn't feel as long as it actually is. But yeah, this movie, and I said this in my Dune reaction, this movie does feel like it's a small chapter in a much bigger multi-movie series. In this case, this is chapter two, and considering the length of these movies, the amount of time it makes to make these movies, the fact that they're coming out in the next few years with more sequels over this long period of time, you know, in the next few years, this movie indeed feels like a very, it could be a very small chapter in a, a surely much bigger movie saga. I can see it now, this movie, like this, compared to this five movie, because you know, I think there are going to be five movies eventually, this five movie saga that's like this. <laughs> My arm got in front of the poster, I'm sorry. So that's for another reason to be excited for the next uh, bunch of movies. And I heard, and I, um, I understand they already finished uh, filming the third one. That's, uh, I don't know what stage, I, I'm assuming post-production, I, I know they're done filming, so that's pretty good. They're really, James Cameron really is on a roll with this. So yeah, better character work, even somehow even better special effects. Uh, it's it's quite the achievement that they were able to film this underwater. And if you look behind at the behind the scenes B roll, it's like <laughs> night and day from that to what they turn it into for the underwater scenes is genuinely mind blowing. And one last thing I want to point out: this movie feels very nostalgic. The those opening few shots of the movie where we see Pandora. Yeah, it took me back to <laughs> to 2009 and uh, 2010 when the movie was uh, released at home. 
and I saw it at, again at home. I wish I saw this in 3D. I saw the first movie in 3D, but you know what? It doesn't even matter. It's it's astounding. It's an astounding movie experience that you just can't miss when it comes to these movies. And I felt so nostalgic <laughs> when the movie began. The first few minutes, it really, it's, I, it's these. This is gonna be. This is a classic movie series in the making, right here. Eight out of ten from me for Avatar: The Way of Water. Now let's get to Glass Onion. Now this is a, not only a great mystery movie. Once again, created by Ryan Johnson, who always delivers impeccable writing in his scripts. This movie script is on pretty much almost on par with the last movie script, but it's, it's more complex than the last movie script somehow. But this is also a very good pandemic movie. Now this is something, hear me out. Uh, you know, with the pandemic happening for the last few years, um, I am interested to see how many more movies come out in the near future that work the pandemic into their stories, like this movie does, like Glass Onion. They use the pandemic as an excuse to go to Miles Braun's island, which is the, where the majority of this movie takes place and where the characters spend most of their time. And it works really well into the story. This movie's story, uh, <laughs> you know, if the last movie was like a donut, as Benoit Blanc so very well phrased it in the last movie, this is layered like an onion. Because in the <laughs> last movie, it's a donut in a sense that Marta Cabrera, played by Ana de Armas, was the hole in the donut and everything else that happened around, she was at the center of everything. This movie, we basically get two mo movies. They tell a story and then they go back and tell it again from another point of view so that things line up. And in first viewing, you can pick up little breadcrumbs that are like, huh. Like there are hints that something is missing or there's a, a detail there that's kind of interesting that makes you think a little bit on. Or like something happens or someone says something that makes you want to... And then halfway through the movie, we see <laughs> Janelle Monet's character, Helen, uh, from her point of view of what's happening. Another layer added to the story. She's playing her twin sister, Andy, which is the biggest shock reveal of the whole movie. This movie is, without a doubt, much more misleading and misdirecting than Knives Out. Now, I like the theme of the movie, which is basically seeing through the BS of tech giants and wealthy people who on the outside seem like geniuses and like, oh, really know what they're doing. But then if you actually get to know them, you get to actually see what the, the truth behind their personas, it's BS. <laughs> That's what the movie is essentially saying the whole time. Which, by the way, Edward Norton, great performance <laughs> as Miles Braun, the idiot uh, billionaire, millionaire, or whatever. His character, Miles, is one of the most memorable from this movie, along with, once again, Benoit Blanc, who... You, Benoit Blanc, by the way, a lot more funny, a lot more fun to, to watch in Glass Onion than in Knives Out, although Daniel Craig in, that, in Knives Out was also fantastic. I'm really glad that we were introduced to Benoit Blanc. This is gonna, another classic movie character being made. I also like Whiskey, by the way. I know she was a very minor character, um, and at first I, it seemed like her character was gonna be like one of those, oh, you know, one of those characters where you just, you see them and it's like, oh, you roll your eyes at them, like, oh my god. But no, I, Madeline Klein did a good performance as Whiskey. It made me get to like her a little bit more as the movie went on. And then by the end of the movie, unlike the last movie, um, I felt that you, you kind of respected the characters a little bit more. Because they're, uh, unlike the last movie, I had a few characters in the ensemble, apart from the, you know, the, the two or three main protagonists who I kind of liked. But in Glass Onion, you know, the main ensemble cast, apart from the two or three the main protagonists, um, I didn't really like any of them. They're very unlikable characters, but when you get to the end, you, you, you kind of respect them a little bit more. They put their BS aside and they stand up for Janelle Monet's character, Helen, um, by 
selling out Miles, teaming up to sell out Miles and his failed clear plan. Yeah. <laughs> and so with that, I give Glass Onion also an 8 out of 10. So thank you for watching my double re reaction to both Avatar The Way of Water and Glass Onion. And I will...